Yeah, morning. Morning. Well, we'll jump right into it. So uh, hit you with a little bit of color here. So Azalea uh, Hino Crimson, um, we have uh, ones and threes still available. Um, you can see there the today photos. Um, not seen any color yet, uh, hoping not to for a little bit, but uh, you know, spring is coming. Um, so they're ready to ship. Uh, we're very limited on the azaleas we have available. Uh, sorry to say that, you know, pretty much the, the Karens are, you know, all booked out, but uh, we do have these Hinos uh, looking really good. Um, you can see there the, the sizing. Uh, I really like the sizing on the, the gallon. Um, and the, the three has a good size as well, but uh, good quality and uh, we got good availability there. So uh, go to Hino White. So we've never really carried Hino White before, uh, but uh, we brought it in um, just because it couldn't find any other white. There, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, we tended to stay away from it uh, because it can be a little bit of a, a regular grower. Um, it's still a good plant. Uh, we just really chose Cascade or Pleasant White in a pinch. Uh, they're just a little bit more uniform grower for, for us in the nursery. Uh, it took a little bit less trimming, but Kinos are, are very good. Um, you know, they're good for the Ohio area. Obviously, azaleas don't, don't do real well the, the further north you go, but uh, it's a good azalea for the Ohio area, uh, any place where you would use uh, an azalea. But uh, don't have a lot of availability. Uh, you can see there, uh, Cheryl's got, you know, 340 and 166. So uh, at least it gives you some options. I think there was just a hair of availability on some other ones. Yeah, um, but it was not, really small. Yeah, not not a whole lot on anything else. So we do have we have a red and a white. Um, give them a blue ribbon, and they can be patriotic. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that gives you a couple options there. So, next uh, B and B. Um, so uh, we do have cornus cuses available. I will tell you these are really nice plants. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk about them again. Um, you know, and I'm going to push you guys hard. Uh, you need to keep thinking about this, that uh, the uh, the season's going to go quick this year. So uh, the sooner we get the orders, the easier it will be to process and and uh, take care of and do all those kind of things. So um, we do have uh, mostly 60s and 72s. There's a few 84s if you want to snap those up. Um, Cousas are usually the deciduous you can dig the longest, but believe it or not, I am seeing a tiny bit of activity in there. So that's telling me the, uh, the game's on. So uh, the, uh, the clock has started and uh, usually we have till about the 20th of April to dig deciduous. I don't know if we're going to get that far. So uh, it's all dependent on mother nature and the plant. Uh, can't change much about that. So uh, next is grass. So um, just wanted to show you a little bit of a collage. Uh, we do have availability on all the ones we're showing you here. Um, but we just basically wanted to show you the status. Uh, Carl Forster, that's a cool season grower. So it's, it's going to be uh, further along than the other types of grass. Uh, you have Scout, which is a sterile grass. Uh, Hamlin, which most of you should know, you know, is a, is a dwarf, very late bloomer. Um, Blonde Ambition um, is uh, the helicopter one, you know, where it has the seed pod that that runs uh, horizontal. Uh, so it has that really uh, interesting effect and little zebra. So you can see here all these grass that we're shipping uh, have activity. Uh, we really want to try to have that as much as possible. So we're sure that it's viable, that, that the plant uh, made it through the winter okay. And then also, you know, we want to get something to the customer that that looks like something instead of like a, a bunch of dead sticks. So I think uh, the crops are moving along fine. The only grass that we have that really takes a long time are, are like the plains grass, like the Cheyenne sky. You can imagine where they come from, the high plains. It takes them a very long time to break. That's why they can survive those really rugged conditions. So those are the ones that you're going to see very little activity for for quite a while and uh, also in that is the what's the purple one um, the new one <laughs> uh, 
No, 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 no. The the one through synergy. Uh, well, that's all right. There, there's some like that one purple one, black uh, something. Blackhawk. Black here we go. So yeah, Blackhawk uh, through the synergy group. Uh, that that one there uh, is also a very late breaker. Um, it's also very. That's why it was picked for that program. Um, back when it was a first look, it uh, it takes a long time to break. It can really take tough conditions. So that's that's why we carry those plants. So they may not. The reason I'm talking a little bit about it is they may not particularly be the grass that you want to think about April sales in the garden center because they're not really going to show you anything. They're really going to start to shine with their color and stuff once we get into May or the rest of the grass. They're going to see activity that's going to show their customer that, hey, it's alive. It's this is what it's going to look like. It's starting to grow. So, so that's all. Uh, let's see. Um, so we got uh, a couple of photos. This is more just to show you where we are. <clears throat> so we do have a few available Royal Star, but we just wanted to show you. You know, what is that? Uh, it looks like a little bit of white. So um, the flowers are starting to push. Uh, I have a, a couple of large ones, probably the one is close to 60 years old in my yard. Um, it's starting to show color, you know, white as well. So it is time. So Royal Star Messels Merrells are the first ones to pop. It's very possible in certain areas, especially midpoint of the state, that we will be seeing Royal Stars open full uh, this week. So that is definitely early. It's not unheard of for early April, uh, but uh, th this is this is one of the earliest years I've ever seen this one show some some flower. Once they're out full, which could happen next week, they don't ship well to keep the flower looking good. So I just don't want to get into catch 22 on these where they're out full the week after next, and then somebody complains because the bloom looks rough. Uh, this plant blooms early, the bloom lasts about two weeks, and then it's done. So uh, if you got somebody that really wanted it for flower to sell them a lot, that's going to be a tough order this year. Because um, really, you think about it, by the time they get traffic in most of your areas, this thing will be done blooming uh, by uh, mid-April. So um, it's something to think about. If you have questions about it, concerns, make sure you pass it along. Um, Golden Glory there, uh, same thing. You can see there we're starting to see color. That one tends to keep its flower a little bit longer, but there again, it's you know it, it's going to flower out. That's a B and B item, so chances are it's pretty much going to a wholesaler or landscaper, um, where that's probably not as big of an issue as some of the container magnolias. All right, hydrangea firelight. Um, so we wanted to show you we still have some options on hydrangeas. Uh, some availability. So uh, we got about 800 of these. You can see there, uh, they're the guys trimmed them back, got the dead flowers off, cleaned up. We're expecting to see activity probably in about two weeks. Um, you know, we, we here can see the, the activity markers where we see a little white tip on the root. Um, we can see a little bit of the bud swell, but we're really a couple weeks away from the thing kind of pushing the bud out. So that's where we are as far as stages. You can see there the just uh, this is one of the reasons we like this plant. Just that flower, you know, that real uh, pink to deep reds on it. Uh, the flowers can get pretty big, okay, uh, as the plant gets older. So the first couple of years, it'll be, you know, a normal size hydrangea flower, you know, cone, cone type flower. And then uh, as the plant gets a little older, the, we really notice that the flowers just, once that plant can support it, it can really push out these big, huge blooms. So um, it is not a plant for a small area. It's not a dwarf or anything. Uh, it grows, you know, the same speed as a, as a limelight or anything like that. So uh, it needs a, a big space. So it's a big grower, has uh, huge blooms, shows off. So that's the type of environment it needs. Uh, quick fire fab is the next one. 
So uh, quick fire fab is the next generation of quick fire. Um, it's, uh, you know, white, then it turns to pink. Uh, so it's, it's one of the type that changes where we just talked about firelight pretty much comes out red. You could get a little bit of white, but it's red for most of its time uh, as it's pushing its bloom out. But this is different. Uh, it will push out a white flower, then it'll start to change to pink, and then it will go to all pink eventually. So um, the reason uh, Proven Winners selected this was because of the longer lasting bloom. So they did some selection on quick fire and they found some that the bloom was lasting much longer uh, by several weeks. So uh, it gives you more bloom time before that bloom starts to fade. So that's the claim to fame to quick fire fab. So um, both quick fire and quick fire fab uh, both have the same flower. Uh, it's just this one, um, it, it seemed to present its flower a little better too. That's what I heard the breeders talk about, but their big thing was the, how the flower lasts that much longer. So, so it's a good plant. We got 500 available, uh, definitely can drop in for people looking for quick fire, or if they're, you know, I've heard a lot of buzz that they, they really did a good job with promoting these. Um, people are really getting excited about these these new series of them or the next generations. So, all right, uh, Ilex Royal family. So, um, you know, we've talked about this, but you know, I see this being a very important plant. Uh, you guys are really chewing through the numbers, um, and I see you continue to book them. And it's one of uh, it's been over the last couple of weeks one of the top numbers we've been pulling, which is great. Uh, we do grow a lot of these. Um, you know, it's it's our choice to to, to send out to to uh, the end consumer because it's it's just no fuss, no muss. You got males and females, prince and princess in the same pot. You don't have to worry about pollinator. You don't have to worry about anything. Just you can plant one or you can plant a whole bunch. Uh, it doesn't matter. And you'll get uh, excellent berries because you got a male mixed in there. Um, sometimes males can set a berry by themselves. It, it usually happens a little bit, you know, it's something to remember when you're buying the singles, sometimes that can happen. They're not true. Menservia types are not true. This is a true male. This is a, this is a true female. They, they both have the, the reproductive parts to, to make the berries. It's just when they selected, they found one that tends to be a heavy pollen producer that attaches real well to the receptor on the female, and then the other one tends to be more that it it, it is regulated to set a berry. So um, that's kind of the thing with the holly for some of you who are new to it. So um, you can sometimes see a male holly, a prince or whatever. Uh, or uh, a China boy or whatever it is, set a berry. But if they are true towards the boy, they shouldn't really set that many. It should be like one or two. And then the females would be the one that would have the most. So, but round it out, royal family, you don't have to worry about any of that. So we took care of that for you. And we got 3,000 available. That's the crop. They look great. Uh, they came through the winter looking really good. Uh, I was real happy with how those came through. Okay, double play doozy. Uh, we still have this one available. You can see there in the photo just a little bit of haze of leaf. So it's going to come out with a nice deep red leaf, almost purplish. Uh, so this plant uh, from the get go when it starts, it's really going to have this real deep color. Then as the leaf folds out, you'll get more green in the leaf. Okay, but you'll still have those tendencies to red and purple colors in the leaf. And then its bloom is spectacular. That's not going to happen for a while. It's definitely a memorial weekend or after type of event for the spirea to really start blooming. But at least with this one, with Doozy, you know, almost like with the gold, you, you have interest right off the bat. You know, with the golds, you have a yellow leaf. With uh, Doozy, you got this real red, deep color and so you're going to have something to look at, something of interest uh, before it blooms. We really like the double play series because of its disease resistance. Um, as far as from a grower standpoint, 
and they take very little maintenance. They repeat bloom. Uh, really, even if you don't trim off the old flowers, they're still going to bloom past those old flowers, which is which is really cool about the new generations. I really I know there's still people out there that that want the old varieties. Um, I really don't see any reason why they still do that, other than they don't want to change, because these these new these new double plays are really they're just a game changer. They just they're they just outperform the old standards by leaps and bounds. So, all right, uh, B and B again, mix it up. So uh, pungens pendula. So this is a weeping blue spruce. You can see there we have 60s and 72s. So we got good availability. Um, we got uh, really nice plants. They're skirted down to the ground, which is what we really try for. We actually do. You'll you'll see it if you see the load or you see the plant land. The guys tie up that bottom skirting and kind of twist it around the plant. Uh, that way it won't break up that skirting. That's important to keep that on there. So they're very careful how they tie it. And that way when the customer gets it, you know, they really have to make sure they get, we do a, a lot of extra tying on it so it'll ship well. So we got to make sure we get all that twine out of there and get them fluffed back out because it will cascade down over the ball. Um, so that's something that's important. They don't want to leave those plants tied up for too long. We just do that for the shipping process. So, um, and then go ahead and go to the strobus pendula. So, weeping white pine. Um, so you can see there we still have some good availability here. Um, same thing. We really try to beef them up, get them going. Uh, when they flush this year, you can see there that we're starting to let it push out. So it's going to get real unique. It's going to start pushing out to one side or the other. Um, and uh, it's just going to start giving you unique shapes and it'll still continue to grow up um, and you can train it to grow up even higher. So you can do a lot of different things with it, but, uh, but uh, they're also uh, out there digging. They're digging very well. Balls are looking real good. So uh, yeah, stuff has been looking great. Uh, go ahead and go to the miscellaneous group. So this is just a couple direct sell items uh, we wanted to show you. We were able to bring some things in to uh, supplement our inventory a little bit. So we were able to get some tough stuff red. Uh, they're here. Um, uh, we did communicate with uh, Dave Cheryl, his communication with Dave Noble, um, you know, because the tough stuff is normally grown at Avon, but, uh, you know, we'll process these out of here. And then we were able to get some snow mounts. So, um, I know we had to disappoint some people we kind of oversold those snow mounds. It's an old standard. I, I stumbled across them um, and uh, was able to bring them in. So uh, this this particular plant is a one shot wonder spirea. So this is not a re bloomer. It's a heavy spring bloomer, lots of white flowers on it, and then that's it. So it uh, blooms in the spring. And then, uh, you know, it's a tough plant. It's a great plant for very, very tough situations, erosion control situations, uh, things like that. It is a bigger spirea, so it's definitely not a dwarf, so it's going to get pretty big. Uh, moundy, uh, I would say upwards of four by four is not, definitely not unheard of. And, uh, but uh, it's it's really a utility spirea used a lot for uh, commercial jobs, state jobs, things like that. So uh, we were uh, definitely disappointing some people because we didn't have inventory. So know of anybody that was looking for them, reach back out to them, and uh, we have a few available. Uh, spring lace, uh, we've talked about this a lot, but uh, I just want to keep pounding the pavement because this thing's going to look fantastic here in a little bit. Um, it has a leathery leaf, um, you know, which uh, has a lot of interest to it. Um, it uh, has that uh, real nice uh, white flower. It is not a fragrant, it has a very weak fragrance, but um, it, it's really not considered in the fragrant family. Uh, it's more about the foliage. Um, it does keep that foliage for the most part. I would consider it kind of a semi evergreen. The further south you go, it, it might not even defoliate. Uh, but uh, up here in northern Ohio, 
uh, it will lose a lot of its leaves, but still keep some of them, and then it'll re-break. Uh, nice leathery type of kind of leathery, glossy foliage, you know, a lot of texture on the foliage. It's really more for the foliage, this plant is. But, it, you know, it does have a really nice bloom. It, bloom, it does bloom heavy, um, but it's very low maintenance. It seems to, the bloom uh, petiole seems to fall away, so you don't really have to trim it out. So that's kind of nice. It's kind of self-cleaning, and then uh, it just starts growing again. So low maintenance plant, good plant. All right, that's what we got. So, um, you know, I'll just circle back on B&B. Uh, like I said, everything's going well. Uh, we're out there uh, digging away. Um, you know, if you, if you got anything hanging out there, r rush them through sooner than later. I just don't anticipate spring being very kind to us as far as giving us all the time we want. So uh, I would expect the season's probably going to end a little early. So uh, try to get that uh, wrapped up and get orders in as soon as you can, get those to Mark, and then uh, uh, he'll get them to Jake about here and he'll be processing through it. So I uh, haven't had any hiccups or anything. Ball quality, like I said, is great. Um, so stuff's looking real good. As far as weather goes, uh, we pretty much have the nursery cut off, uh, so we're only protecting a few tender items, items we might want to push a little bit further along. Uh, other than that, I, I would say that we're about 98% uncovered uh, here at Huron. I would be very careful leaving things covered because I think it's going to uh, push it out too far and then it's going to flop and not look well. So, um, but you know, we still have to watch. We may have to recover. Um, if the weather stays consistent, we'll be okay. But if we get a downturn, which is very possible, we'll get a couple of cold days. We'll have to go back out there and recover and protect things as needed. So uh, we're not out of the woods yet. All right. Anybody have any questions?